And is, ugh. Do you have like a copy of like War and Peace or something? This is ugh, garbage. Hey everyone. Welcome to the Firebase Pro Series. My name is Mike McDonald, and I'm the product manager for Firebase Security Rules. I helped build security rules, and I've secured more apps than I can count. Today, we're gonna dive deeper into how security rules work and show an advanced use case to get you more comfortable building secure, production-ready applications. As you may already know, security rules protects your data in both cloud storage and cloud Firestore from unauthorized access. What you may not know is that it can do so much more. Using security rules, you can define new resource types, validate incoming data, and execute business logic. We'll demonstrate how this works by building a simple chat app using Cloud Firestore. Because this is Google, we're gonna build a new group chat app. We'll start off with some fundamentals before diving into our advanced material. The first thing that we'll do when we wanna start our chat app is define what a chat message looks like. It's in JSON, it has a username, a user ID, a created at timestamp, and message text. Since we'll be writing these messages to Cloud Firestore, we want to ensure that Firestore knows exactly what a chat message looks like, so we can store all users and all messages in the same way. Within Firestore, chat messages live within a chat room collection and contain the information that we showed before. We're going to go ahead and write some logic to ensure that all chat messages look the same. First, will only allow creation if the message has certain properties. The request resource data represents our message and will first ensure that the size only contains those four properties. So the size is gonna be four because we have four properties. The username we're gonna check and make sure is a string. And then we'll replicate this for the user ID, which is also a string. The created at, which is going to be a timestamp. And finally, the message text, which is also going to be a string. This is a lot of really nice logic. Let's actually take this logic, bundle it up, and transform it into a function so that we can reuse it. So we'll go ahead, copy all of that, actually just the important pieces, and move it up into a function. We're gonna call this function is chat message, and we'll pass in that message contents. So the request resource data, which is exactly what we're writing to Firestore. Just adding it in code, it's good fun. A function is composed of a return statement and a number of additional conditions. So as you can see, we're checking those exact same conditions and returning whether or not something is going to be a function. Using functions makes it really easy to add additional validation logic later. Say, if we wanna make a system like Twitter or SMS, where we limit all messages to say 160 characters. We can simply add an additional condition to the end of our is chat message function. Here, we'll do 160 characters. Okay, right now, anyone can read or write any message in any room and they can claim to be anyone. There's absolutely no authentication checks in our system. We'd like to add two additional functionalities. The first is that we can verify that a user is in fact who they claim to be. And the second one is that we wanna let members of a chat room have one of two distinct roles. They can either be a reader, where they can only view messages, or they can be an editor, where they can both create and view messages. The first problem, verifying the message creator is who they say they are is relatively easy to solve. We can simply add an additional condition to the end of our is chat message statement where we say the request resource data's user ID, which we've already defined in our message, is going to match the auth user ID that comes in from Firebase authentication. That's really easy. The second problem is gonna be a little more tricky. We'd like to ensure in order to create a message that a user is an editor. To do this, we'll actually create a sibling collection within our room called users. 
And these are going to have documents whose ID is a Firebase auth user ID. And within that document, they'll have a single role. And that role is going to be either an editor or a reader. We can go over to our JSON and see exactly how that's defined. As you can see, it's literally just a single property with a field and a value where the value is either editor or reader. Similar to what we did in our messages collection, we can also validate that when someone is creating a new user, that the format is correct. We'll create another function. This one is called isUser. We'll check that the size is 1, because there's only going to be one field called role. And we'll check that the role property is either editor or reader. We don't have to check that it's a string, because we're just checking the string values here. Once we know what roles our user has, we can make a call to check that a user has a particular role. For this, we'll create a new function called getRoleForUser. We'll use the built-in Firestore get method that returns a document at a particular location in a different part of our database. At this point, we'll actually look to the user's collection for a particular user ID document that contains that role, and we'll fetch it. From there, we can add that get role for user call to our creation check and ensure that the user, in order to create a document, is an editor. After that, it's easy to extend that model to add support for readers. We'll simply, in our allow get or list, say if get role for user is in either reader or editor. And that would allow both readers and editors to view individual messages or list messages. But wait, how does the first user in a chat room get permissions to create any messages? In computer science, this is a problem known as bootstrapping. We need to enable a user to create a new room and at the same time, give them the permissions required to give other users access to create messages in that room. We can do this by adding a condition to user creation that allows a new type of user, an admin user, to be created if a room doesn't already exist. Once that room exists, we'll let that admin create new users, provided that they're either a reader or an editor. We'll accomplish this by writing an isAdminUser function. It's going to look really similar to our isUser function. As a matter of fact, we'll copy and paste the contents of our isUser function and simply check if the role is an admin instead of an editor or a user. We'll then go into our users collection and change our condition from isUser to isAdminUser. The next thing that we'll want to do is add a, an existence check to see if our room already exists. To do that, we'll create a function called room exists. And similar to our get call, we're going to use another call that's built into Firestore called exists. And exists takes a path, and it returns whether or not a document exists there. So we'll check if any documents exist within the room and return yes or no. Now things are going to get a little tricky. We have those two conditions. If the room doesn't exist, we'll call not room exists on our room. We also want to ensure that the user performing this action is an admin. And lastly, we want to check that the user performing the action is doing it on behalf of themselves. So you can only become an admin if you yourself are becoming the admin. That's the first half of our condition. The second condition is going to be what happens when a room is already created. And that's going to be ORed in with our existing condition. The first thing that we'll check is if the user is an admin in the existing room. We can do that by calling get role for user and checking that that's admin. We'll then do similar checks. We'll call is user. We want to make sure that they're creating either an editor or a reader. And lastly, we're going to ensure that the user doing the action is not the user who is being created, right? You don't want a case where you, the admin, are giving you yourself a different set of permissions in that room. You want to only be able to create readers or editors who are not yourself. That brings us to our finished product. It's a bare bones but very secure group chat app. Let's take a look at what that looks like in real life. As you can see, on the left side of our screen, we have an app called ProChat. We're all professionals here. We're building a really secure chat app. 
I can type in a username. In this case, I'll just use my name and I'll submit a chat message. But before I do that, on the right side of the screen, we actually have the Cloud Firestore console. And we can see we've created rooms, we have a public room, and within that, we have a number of users. Well, actually, I think we only have one user, and that's me. We can take a look at that user, and as you can see, it has a role of editor. That means when I click Submit, I'll be allowed to both read and write chat messages. Let's go over, click Submit, and boom, there we have it. Our message was added. Again, you can see in the database, we added that message. We now have a message is collection, and you can see the hello YouTube chat message there. To prove that, that I'm not crazy, let's do that again. That was really cool, wasn't it? Submit that message. And immediately over in the Firestore console, you see that message added and we can validate it. Let's go back to our users and ensure that I'm not lying to you by changing the role to reader. Let's try adding a message now. Let's see if I can still write. Do to do, do. No, permission denied. That's working exactly as intended. Within Firestore, we don't have any messages. Let's try reducing my permissions to something that wouldn't let me read or write. So let's actually call a new role, the no permissions role, and update my user. And as you can see, immediately, Firestore gave me a missing or insufficient permissions error as well. And as you can see, when I refresh the page, I can no longer see messages. To prove that again, I was not lying, we can switch back to editor, I can write my name again, and I can submit new messages. In this case, I'll actually see all of my previous messages because I can now read them again, and we'll submit that. You can see it added over there on the right side, and all of our messages are back. Great, now let's take a look at the rules tab, and we can see the exact set of rules that we already shipped. We have the is chat message function, both the user and is admin user functions, and the additional information around our get role for user and room exists functions, defining our messages in the messages collection, and also defining our users in the user collection. As you can see, security rules are their own very flexible and powerful language. We covered a bunch of different security scenarios, defining new resource types, including users and chat messages, validating our inputs, say, requiring that all chat messages have a text of less than 160 characters, and ensuring that our business logic functioned properly. Along the way, we also secured our app for both individuals as well as groups. If you want to learn more about security rules, check out our official documentation. Also, leave a comment if you want us to cover a specific security scenario in a future video. That's all for today. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Firebase Pro Series.